Hi, I'm Micah Lill. I'm the Executive Director for the American Diabetes Association. And I'm here today with Dr. Cohen and Dr. Pradley from the Advent Health Translational Research Institute. So Dr. Pradley, would you like to tell us a little bit about yourself and what great things are happening? Sure. Well, I'm Rich Pratley. I am the director of the diabetes program at the Advent Health Translational Research Institute. And I also see patients at our Diabetes and Endocrine Center at Advent Health. So I've been involved with diabetes and diabetes research my whole career. Our research program involves uh, both studies in type 1 diabetes as well as studies in type 2 diabetes. Some of our studies are very basic, trying to understand how the pancreas functions in type 1 diabetes and what goes awry when people develop diabetes. And some are very practical. For example, we have a study going on in which we are studying the use of advanced insulin pumps for the treatment of type 1 diabetes in older individuals. This is a study called the AIDS study. This is important because we believe this approach can be safer and provide more effective therapy in older individuals. Thank you, Dr. Pradley. Dr. Cohen, how's it going? It's going well, thank you. Um, so my name is Paul Cohen. I'm a faculty member and a clinical research uh, investigator at the Translational Research Institute. Uh, my research program is focused on understanding how physical activity and inactivity impact metabolic health in aging and in diabetes in particular. Um, we're conducting one study at the moment uh, focused on prediabetes and, and type 2 diabetics, um, trying to understand how periods of physical inactivity might um, worsen muscle health in, in type 2 diabetics, older type 2 diabetics, and how physical activity can help uh, recover uh, muscle health from periods of physical inactivity. When I say periods of physical inactivity, I, I'm referring to bed rest specifically. So um, older adults with type 2 diabetes are uh, admitted to hospital more frequently than older individuals without type 2 diabetes. And so we need to understand how uh, exposure to periods of bed rest um, impact the health of older type 2 diabetics. And that's really the focus of my research at the moment. Thank you. So Dr. Pratley, for everybody watching out there, how would you explain the Advent Health Translational Institute to our viewers? Well, the Advent Health Translational Research Institute is just a remarkable facility. Uh, we had our grand opening about 10 years ago, and since then we've seen just exponential growth in both the number of faculty members as well as the number of uh, studies that we're doing and the number of people working there. It's almost a one-of-a-kind facility in the uh, United States where we have uh, the ability to uh, phenotype patients with diabetes, obesity, and other metabolic disorders very deeply. We can do measures of energy expenditure. We have the inpatient unit where we can follow people longitudinally. We can do diet studies. We can do more advanced studies of glucose metabolism, uh, including things like muscle and uh, adipose tissue uh, biopsies. And all of this comes together in our laboratory where we can do very sophisticated analyses. The whole goal of the Advent Health Translational Research Institute is really to advance our understanding of why people develop diabetes and what we can do to help prevent and treat it more effectively. And we do that through advancing the science. We have a very talented group of faculty members who work at the Translational Research Institute and collaborate on all of these studies. So it's a very unique environment. Thank you. So Dr. Cohen, who can participate in this? Um, we recruit participants um, into a number of studies. At any one time, we have 20, 30 uh, studies ongoing at the Translational Research Institute. Um, so our focus is broadly is on uh, metabolism, um, but we have studies um, focused on type 2 diabetes, type 1 diabetes. We have studies focused on exercise, um, weight loss interventions. Um, so basically, and, and we study young individuals, older individuals, individuals with, with various uh, metabolic or cardiometabolic diseases. Um, so anybody can potentially participate in our studies. Um, and, you know, we're here talking to you today um, uh, about, about diabetes. And in particular, we have a number of um, uh, studies focused on type 2 diabetes and type 1 diabetes. And... Um, and with interventions to improve metabolic health in those conditions as well. Thank you. So for the ADA, we're really excited about the discoveries that you both are making. But could you tell our viewers a little bit about maybe some of the discoveries that the Institute has made? 
Yes, we did a very simple study uh, a number of years ago uh, where we took older individuals with type 1 diabetes and gave them a continuous glucose monitor. Now at the time, continuous glucose monitors weren't approved by Medicare for use in older individuals with type 1 diabetes. But this study demonstrated that we were able to reduce the risk for hypoglycemia by 50% and severe hypoglycemia by 90%. So it's a very impactful intervention in these older, high-risk uh, individuals. We published this in JAMA a couple of years ago, and I think this has changed the way we approach the treatment of older individuals with type 1 diabetes. Thank you. That's awesome. So for our volunteers out there, how can they benefit from getting involved with the Advent Health Institute? Um, well, there are a number of tangible benefits to participating in our studies. Um, a lot of our studies involve um, interventions that can actually improve uh, metabolic health, like exercise, weight loss. Um, so there is an opportunity to participate in those kinds of activities um, as a participant in our studies. Um, we also generate a lot of very interesting and useful information about the participant in terms of their metabolic health. Um, we do body composition analysis, we do uh, blood measurements, um, and in the um, tissue samples we take, we also generate interesting information from. So we can provide that information back to uh, participants as well uh, who might be interested in that aspect of their, their metabolic health. I would say it's a very different experience than going to a typical clinic. Patients uh, and participants have time to interact with the nurses, the staff, uh, the clinical research uh, researchers to get their questions answered about their disease state or about what they're uh, engaging in, like exercise, and just have a collegial relationship. I'd say that the ideal person to participate in research is one who's really curious about uh, how their body works, and also one who wants to make a difference, who wants to make an impact for uh, their generation as also, and also the next generation of patients who may be affected by diabetes or uh, one of the other metabolic conditions we study. That's absolutely right, Dr. Proutley. Um, you know, we can't do this kind of research without willing volunteers and, and the majority of our volunteers are, are really motivated by helping to um, be a part of the, the discovery uh, process to help us develop and come up with the next generation of cures for type 2 and type 1 diabetes. Thank you. So you mentioned a little bit in your intro about the REST study. Could you tell us a little bit more about that study particularly? Sure. So the REST study is focused on older adults with prediabetes and type 2 diabetes. We know that older adults with, with type 2 diabetes are uh, admitted to hospital more frequently, and during the period of hospitalization, they're typically exposed to periods of bed rest. They become very physically inactive for that period. And so we want to understand how that period of inactivity, i.e. bed rest, impacts their metabolic health, and particularly their m skeletal muscle health, um, and how well they recover afterwards. Um, so the REST study is, is, a, is a bed rest study uh, in older uh, type 2 diabetics and uh, pre-diabetics in which we, we monitor very closely the recovery of muscle mass, muscle function, and metabolic health after the period of bed rest. Um, participants engage in a physical activity and exercise program afterwards, and um, this information will really inform us as to how better to care for older adults with type 2 diabetes who are admitted to hospital, um, how we can better preserve muscle health during that period of hospitalization. So it's a really important uh, and understudied area um, that will really benefit um, the health of older adults with type 2 diabetes. So as a community member, and I'm coming into the Institute as a volunteer, how long am I going to be seen in the Institute? Is it based on the study? Is every study different? Is there a number you could give our viewers that I would be coming into the Translational Institute with Advent Health? It really varies. Some of our studies are one and done. Come in, answer a few questions, sign informed consents, perhaps have a blood draw or maybe a scan and then uh, you're done. Uh, we collect your information, we aggregate that with uh, maybe information from hundreds of patients, uh, and then we analyze that data. Some are much more intense, like uh, Paul's study uh, of bed rest. Some are of longer duration. So for example, we have studies in type 2 diabetes that we are doing 
in which patients will be seen every three to six months or so for up to about four years. These are studies looking to see whether or not certain drugs for the treatment of diabetes can impact on risk for cardiovascular events as well as progression of chronic kidney disease. This is a different spectrum of uh, research than uh, we oftentimes do in the type uh, in the Translational Research Institute, but it's also a very important part of our uh, spectrum of research because uh, it addresses the uh, treatments for these long-term complications of diabetes that are so important in terms of the morbidity, mortality, and costs of diabetes. Thank you. So we, we recognize that there is a time commitment and a, an investment that's made by uh, research participants, and um, like Dr. Protley said, there, you know, some studies are one and done, they can be finished with one visit, and others are far more involved. Um, and so, you know, part of coming to the TRI and, and uh, inquiring about which study a, p a person might be eligible uh, to participate in is, is finding a study that kind of fits with their uh, schedule, which fits with their time commitment. And um, yeah, we're, we're very good about kind of finding the right study for the right person. Great. So we see the numbers going up with those living with diabetes, pre-diabetic, type 1, type 2. What is Advent Health Translational Institute excited about for the future of changing that? Well, we have a number of things uh, that we are uh, contemplating for the future. Uh, one is that uh, we are writing grants now to study diabetes post-COVID. Turns out it looks like there's an increased risk of developing diabetes after having COVID. We don't understand what the mechanisms are. So with some collaborators that I've worked with in the past on diabetes prevention studies, we're going to recruit a group of individuals who have had COVID and study them to see why they are developing diabetes at an increased rate. So I think that's a very exciting opportunity for the future. It's one that's very timely and one that has important public health uh, uh, implications. In terms of the bigger picture, though, we're excited about continuing to work in this space. There's uh, going to continue to be unmet needs uh, in the areas of diabetes, obesity, and metabolism. There's some exciting new treatments for obesity on the uh, horizon, for example, that uh, we're involved with. And all of these uh, are focused on improving the lives and outcomes for patients who are affected by these metabolic diseases. Thank you. Dr. Cohen, or what are you excited about? Um, I'm very excited about the, the new therapies that are on the horizon for obesity and type 2 diabetes. I'm also very interested in understanding how um, behavioral change or lifestyle change, such as exercise, might uh, work additively or synergistically with some of these um, some of these new treatments that are on, on the horizon. Um, I think it's still very important to remain physically active and to exercise as, as much as possible. And um, I think there's a lot that we don't know yet about um, how exercise can be uh, an additional boost uh, to metabolic health along with uh, the new medications that are coming down the line. And we should probably point out that we're part of a long-term study of the benefits of exercise conducted by the NIH and what, uh, 10 uh, clinical centers yes. uh, around the country in which we're aiming to randomize uh, about 2,400 patients and study the responses to exercise in depth. I think that's a very exciting uh, opportunity for the future. Absolutely, yes. This is the, the motor pack study you're referring to. Um, yes, this is a, a nationwide study, um, very exciting. If anybody is interested in exercise or Understanding the science behind why exercise benefits our health, I think Motor Pack is an excellent study to inquire about. Mm -hmm. I'm excited you guys mentioned obesity because we know the state of Florida right now and with the last pandemic, our numbers are going up, which is infecting our pre-diabetes. But I just want to thank you with 37 million people living with diabetes in the U.S. right now. But if our viewers out there want to get in contact with the Institute, what's the best way for them to be a volunteer and help support this mission? I think um, there should be some contact information <laughs> on the screen. Um, if not, we have a, a website. Uh, if you Google search Translational Research Institute, you'll find our website and um, there's plenty of information there on how to 
had to contact the TRI and um, inquire about uh, being involved in our studies. If you call us or go onto our website and express interests, we'll try to hook you up with the study that's best for you if uh, one exists. And if there isn't one at the present time, we'll keep your name in mind for future studies. Thank you. Thank you both. And don't forget to look at the web address and contact the Advent Health Translational Institute. On behalf of the ADA, we thank you for what you're doing for all of those Americans living with diabetes. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs>